gathered your army to take booty, to carry, carry away silver and gold, to take away livestock and goods, to take great plunder. Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say to God, Thus says the Lord God, On that day when my people Israel dwell safely, will you not know it? Then you will come from your place out of the far north, you and many peoples with you, all of them riding on horses, a great company and a mighty army. You will come up against my people Israel like a cloud to cover the land. It will be in the latter days uh, that I'll bring you against my land so that the nations uh, may know me when I'm hallowed in you, O God, before their eyes. Thus says the Lord God, Are you he of whom I've spoken in former days by my servants, the prophets of Israel, who prophesied for years in those days that I would bring you against them? And it will come to pass at the same time when God comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord God, that my fury will show in my face, for in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath I have spoken, surely in that day there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel. Skip to verse 21. I'll call for a sword. Against Gog throughout all my mountains, says the Lord God. Every man's sword will be against his brother, and I'll bring him to judgment with pestilence and bloodshed. I will rain down on him and on his troops and on the many people who are with him, flooding rain, great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I'll be known in the eyes of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord, wiping Israel off the map. I want to bring to your attention the threats that are afoot, as we said in this building tonight. Iran is in the forefront of the news, and I'm not sure. I haven't been able to get any of this in, in uh, Sky News or any of this. None of this is here. But in the, in the Western world, in the U.S. and in England, it's filled with this. And uh, Iran is in a frantic program to obtain nuclear weapons. In uh, the 10th of January this year, they removed 52 seals from the International Atomic Energy Agent seals uh, at Natanz in uh, Iran. They removed these so that they could uh, carry out the continuation of the materials that are needed for the processing of nuclear weapons. On the 7th of February this year, I have this article. Iran tells Atomic Energy Agency to remove cameras and seals. Vienna, Iran has told the International Atomic Energy Agency to remove surveillance cameras and agency seals from sites and nuclear equipment by the end of next week in response to referral to the United Nations Security Council, the agency said Monday. Iran's demands came two days after the agency reported to Iran to the council over its disputed atomic energy program. Now what we have this evening is a fanatical demon-possessed president of Iran. This man has an agenda let me just read a little bit out of the article that triggered this for me. It says, wiping Israel off the map. For Iran's president, the path to apocalyptic destiny is a nuclear arsenal. And he says these words. He says, the skirmishes in the occupied land, he's talking about in Israel, are part of a war of destiny. The outcome of hundreds of years of war will be defined in Palestinian land. As the imam said, Israel must be wiped off the map. Given the apocalyptic rhetoric, we can understand why President Ahmadinejad might want an arsenal of nuclear missiles. He'd be able to shake down a constant stream of rich European emissary that threaten the Arab Gulf states to lower oil production, neutralize the influence of the United States in the region, and, of course, destroy Israel. In all of his crazed pronouncements, um, this man reflects an end-of-days view. History is coming to its grand finale under his aegis. Indeed, he magically entrances even his foreign audiences into stupor, of his recent United Nations speech, he boasted, I felt that all of a sudden the atmosphere changed there and that for 27 or 28 minutes all the leaders uh, did not blink. 
Many witnesses say that at that time a blue light uh, was uh, upon him and seemed to have a, 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 uh, an aura uh, about him as he spoke. Uh, and this man is an unusual uh, creature. He has said very clearly, we will shut down the Straits of Hormuz. The Straits of Hormuz are where a great deal of the oil of this world comes out of the Arab Gulf states. This is one of the most serious issues of our generation. And what we have is we have a man who feels he is in a divine mission from Allah. And that divine mission is to avenge the defeats that have been suffered in the past and wipe Israel off the map, as I'll give you some more quotes in a little while. This man was one of the terrorists who in 1974 captured and was at the head of the Iran hostage crisis. That was a very serious issue in time past. He feels that he is on a divine mission from Allah and this is his destiny. Now clearly, He's on a path to use uh, nuclear weapons. Bear with me as I read uh, uh, some substance from an article. One uh, Israeli leader says if Iran has resumed its uranium enrichment program, it will take only a few months uh, before it had a nuclear bomb. This concession is in line uh, with what Israeli authorities have been warning for months. And maybe now Washington will start getting serious. Indeed, the Israeli Prime Minister, Eric Sharon, presented this very same assessment to President Bush last April. He goes on to say, in August, Iran unsealed its uranium conversion facility in Isfahan. And Israeli intelli uh, intelligence estimates uh, that Iran has produced 45 tons of uranium hexafluoride uh, gas since June, uh, enough for at least three or four nuclear devices. Now there's a singular focus that this man had. He's not just trying to obtain uh, parity with the rest of the world. He has a single focus. Uh, he has made that very clear and that focus is to uh, erase uh, Israel from the face of the earth. But not only Israel, uh, he has the Western nations uh, in his sights. Let me read you a couple more quotes. If by the end of March 2006, the international community will have failed to halt Iran's nuclear weapons program, by diplomatic efforts, they will be pointless, uh, this man says. Iran uh, has, the, uh, uh, has the upper hand in negotiations uh, with the international community. If the Muslim world had an atomic bomb, it would be in good shape after a nuclear exchange with Israel because a nuclear bomb could destroy the Jewish state while Muslim countries with their much larger populations would survive. The world, this man says, without Zionism, vowed that a wave of Palestinian attacks would destroy Israel. There is no doubt uh, that the new wave in Palestine will soon wipe, the, wipe this disgraceful blot uh, from the face of the Islamic world, he declared. Anybody who recognizes Israel will burn in the fire of the Islamic nation's fury, while any Islamic leader who recognizes uh, the Zionist regime means uh, he is acknowledging uh, the surrender and defeat of the Islamic world. Israel has already purchased two nuclear submarines from Germany, uh, three rather, has them, has them uh, deployed in the Persian Gulf. Uh, they have just arranged to buy two more and have these delivered. These are capable of firing cruise missile, missiles carrying nuclear, nuclear weapons, uh, and the subs are able to remain submerged for weeks. Uh, this indicates that Israel may be preparing for the possibility of surviving a nuclear strike and being able to respond in kind to such an attack. Now, God's giving us a heads up tonight. In the book of Ezekiel, in chapter 38, verses 18 and 19, let me... Uh, read that again for your memory. It will come to pass at the same time. When God comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord God, that my fury will show in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath, I've spoken. Surely in that day, there shall be a great earthquake uh, in the land uh, of Israel. 
Now behind this uh, is, of course, uh, Soviet Russia. Russia has been behind most of the conflicts that have been involved uh, in the Middle East. At the present, they're saying to the world community, what we will do is that we will process this material that is for peaceful uses uh, for nuclear facilities uh, and generating power in Iran. We will watch over that uh, and we'll make sure that they will never have uh, anything for a nuclear weapon. Well, I'm an old man and I've watched Soviet Russia all my lifetime. They've never kept a single promise that they've ever kept. So what we're dealing with here is a, uh, is a cover for Iran, whatever's being done, they're a client nation, and Gog and Magog and Meshach and Tubal relate to Soviet Russia as we'll see in a few moments. Russia has never kept one of their truces. They're involved in much of the conflict of, of my entire and your entire lifetime. And as we see this, uh, we're seeing a little bit of history that we need to reflect to give us a feeling of what's going on here. 1973, uh, three nations invaded Israel, Egypt, Syria, and Jordan. They caught Israel uh, by surprise, uh, and it was uh, on Yom Kippur, a holy holiday. Uh, they immediately rushed in, uh, and uh, they were at the point of totally overthrowing uh, the government and, uh, and, 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 and taking the entire land, uh, and uh, Israel was actually arming nuclear weapons uh, uh, because they felt that this was, uh, this was the end. Uh, Moshe Dayan told Golda Meir uh, well, that the third temple is at an end, and he asked permission to arm their nuclear forces uh, and try to defend themselves. President Nixon, who was the United States president at the moment, uh, who has always been a friend of Israel, rose to the occasion. The United States of America had 24 C-141 Starlifters. Uh, 23 of these uh, were operative. Uh, he put them on a round-the-clock, 24-hour-a-day uh, schedule, flying tanks and munitions in to uh, rearm Israel and to help them in that place. Within a matter, matter of days, uh, Israel was in, within 12 miles uh, of Damascus, kicking butt right and left, uh, and they were within 60 miles uh, of Cairo, Egypt, uh, when Russia said, uh, we're going to come in, you're going to have to stop this, we're going to come in, and President Nixon said, if you do, we push the button. The only time in history that the United States forces have been put on red alert, uh, uh, the Soviet Russia paused, they caused a cease, uh, called a ceasefire, and uh, at that moment, uh, uh, it was stopped. Uh, and one of our guides at one time said, the most famous man in Israel said, do you know who he is? We said, no. Who, who would he be? And he said, President Nixon. There's a statue of him in Tel Aviv. Because they know that he saved Israel from total destruction. 1982, Israel grew tired of the incursions from Lebanon. And uh, they decided they were going to invade and establish a perimeter that would be a neutral perimeter. And uh, they invaded in, in Lebanon. This is, uh, uh, some of the details of this are in a book called 1982, Magog Cancel. They invaded uh, and they wanted to establish a perimeter there. And to their astonishment, uh, they discovered uh, huge armaments uh, that were concealed in tunnels uh, in Lebanon that contained equipment for a million man army. They were stunned as they saw this. They knew that only two nations in the world were capable of uh, digging tunnels like this. One was the United States. They knew they didn't. Uh, the other was Soviet Russia. And indeed, uh, it was filled uh, with Russian equipment, uh, all kinds of supplies of every kind. Uh, Israel discovered these. They began to haul this, uh, these armaments out. Uh, and it took them seven months uh, working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, huge trucks uh, to truck all this stuff back into Israel uh, to give you some idea of what was planned uh, and it's called 1982 Magog canceled. Uh, it was Russia that had planned uh, and was back uh, of that operation. This gives you a feeling about Gog and who Gog is. I want to bring to you a, pro uh, a prophetic dimension for a moment. Something is going to trigger Ezekiel 38 uh, and bring this to pass uh, in the near future.
This is going to be either a preemptive strike upon Iran, which is, uh, as you'll see, is, uh, is in the offing at the moment. This is a real possibility, yeah? and uh, this is being talked about openly uh, around the world in the U.S. and in Israel. And uh, let me just give you one quote. The Speaker of the House, uh, former Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich, a Republican from Georgia, who is a prospective 2008 presidential candidate, argues uh, that the United States may need to preemptively invade Israel. And uh, he says, uh, if, uh, if efforts to, uh, uh, and, and thwart that country's de development of a nuclear weapon, if the efforts to inspire a diplomatic solution to that does not come. I have an article from uh, 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 the various sources here. Just give you a couple of these. Strategies uh, at the Pentagon, this is Washington, D.C., are drawing up plans for devastating bombing raids backed by submarine-launched ballistic missiles uh, attacks against Iran's nuclear sites uh, as a last resort uh, to block Tehran's efforts uh, to develop an atomic bomb. Central Command and Strategic Command planners are identifying targets, uh, assessing weapons uh, loads, and working on logistics for an operation the Sunday Telegraph uh, has learned. This is more than just the standard military contingency assessment, said a senior Pentagon advisor. This has taken on much greater urgency uh, in recent months. So what we have here then is... Uh, a realization that uh, the clock is ticking. This man, who undoubtedly is demonically motivated, isn't just arming for defense. He is intent on obtaining nuclear weapon. The world community now, even the United States, uh, United Nation, recognizes that they've risen to the occasion and they know that something's going to have to be done. Now, either that's going to transpire with a preemptive strike against Iran or uh, something else may happen. And uh, if you are interested, you might obtain a book, The Next Three Wars in Israel. And uh, it is very possible that Israel may mount a preemptive strike uh, against Egypt and Syria specifically uh, as uh, they have had plans uh, before in a, in a trip that I took to Israel some years ago. Uh, Jane's uh, 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 news uh, of Intelligence Digest, which uh, carries news from around the world, uh, noted that Syria had planned to invade uh, and Egypt together uh, into the land of Israel, uh, and uh, they were had a had a time clock set, uh, but uh, Turkey. Uh, had another agenda, and they wanted a, a Turkish Kurdish uh, terrorist uh, release that Syria uh, was giving refuge to. They put 100,000 troops on the Israeli border and said, give him up or we come in. That happened right at that time uh, and stopped the time clock. Uh, and Israel knows uh, that she's living uh, on the edge of the sword. She may take out Egypt and Syria in this, or this could all happen at one time. We don't really know that, but what we do know is uh, that uh, there's compelling events that are going to happen that are said in the book of prophecy. Verse 4 says, I'm going to put a hook in your jaws. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it means that uh, this is an animal uh, that they're taking to slaughter, and they put a hook in their jaws, and the pain is led along, uh, and uh, this is the picture that is there. God says... Uh, I'm going to put a hook in your jaw. I'm going to make a compulsive event. I'm going to be behind the scenes. I'm going to pull you into a place. And this is found in Ezekiel 38, verse 4. Verses 10 and 11 say, Thus says the Lord God on that day, it shall come to pass that thoughts will arise in your mind and you will make an evil plan. You will say, I will go up against a land of unwalled villages. I'll go to peaceful people who dwell safely, all of them, dwelling without walls uh, and having neither bars uh, nor gates. Israel is a very peculiar land. This is the only uh, uh, people on earth, uh, the Jewish people that God has said, this is my people. Amen. I know the church is called your people, but we have a different place in, in, in God's economy. This is the only people that God has said, these are my people. Israel is the only land 
in the entire earth and in history that God has said, this is my land. Can you say amen? amen. Jerusalem is the only city on earth that God has said, this is my city. Now these are not light things. How many of you believe in God tonight? These are words that come from God and God has said Israel is my land, the Jews are my people, and Jerusalem is my city. Now what we're looking at is a regathered people. If I could just diverge for a moment to call your attention to what we're dealing with in the land of Israel. In Jeremiah 32, verses 7 and 8, God says, Behold, I will gather them out of all the countries where I've driven them in my anger in my fury and in great wrath, I will bring them back to this place and I will cause them to dwell safely. They shall be my people and I will be their God. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 21, the Bible says, Then say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Surely I will take the children of Israel from among the nations, uh, wherever they have gone, and will gather them from every side uh, and bring them into uh, their own land. Now this is prophecy. And uh, these uh, prophecies uh, have been fulfilled uh, on the very day that we're sitting in this place. God has done one of the most marvelous things in all of world history. He has taken a nation that has passed into antiquity or ceased to exist. He has uh, caused uh, these people to return to this land, uh, one of the greatest miracles of all time from all nations of the world, back into this place. Uh, he's caused them to return uh, into that land, uh, and it's one of the greatest miracles of all time. Ezekiel prophesied, you can find this in a book called The Signature of God where he has the exact schedule. And Ezekiel prophesied that in 2,520 years, this would transpire and there would be a nation born in a day. I can remember, I know that you're not that old, but I can remember, May 14, 1948. I was a young teenager in 1948 in Prescott, Arizona. And I remember that the uh, newspapers and the buzz was there. The newspapers were Israel has become a nation. I had not a clue what that was all about, but I still remember the, the buzz that was there and the headlines, Israel had become a nation. One of the greatest miracles of all time, a nation born in a day, come, Jews come back to their land from all over the world and their original language restored to them. Ezekiel could prophesy today on the, in the land of Israel in the, in the Jewish language uh, and they would understand him perfectly. This is one of the great miracles uh, of all time. I was on one uh, tour uh, to Israel when I had an Argentinian Jew. He looked like Rob Gibson. <laughs> an Argentinian Jew. This man had come from Argentina into Israel, this was his land, born and raised in Argentina, returned to this land by this powerful and wonderful spiritual miracle gathering of God. I was on one tour to Israel when we had an English guide, Malcolm Cartier. He came in and uh, he'd raised in England, spoke perfect, proper English, uh, but had returned to this land uh, and was living there and his heart was drawn uh, by the Spirit of God. This year we had a guide named Mark Sugarman in our, on our bus. Mark Sugarman was born in Massachusetts in the United States of America. Speaks perfect American English and he himself gave the testimony of how God had drawn him to that land as a young man. I believe it was when he was 18 years old. He's a part of the great miracle of God. This is one of the greatest miracles of all time. And so this brings us to consideration. Here clearly God has established these people in that nation. Here clearly God has drawn them back to rebuild and to restore that land. It is a beautiful land today. And I want to ask you this question. Do you think now that God is going to stand by and watch Russia and the Muslim League that's going to come with them destroy that land and simply stand by and watch that come to pass? If you think that, you don't know God. 
The reason I'm laying this groundwork for you is make you understand uh, that we're dealing with uh, profound ramifications uh, and this has consequences uh, for you and I. Let's make an intelligent analysis today. Mankind has never created a weapon he did not use. Think about that. Never in the history of the world has mankind created a weapon for warfare and has not used it. Such a strange thing as recently, Jacques Chirac, who is the president of France, who, you know, France has never fought for anything in their entire life. <laughs> if you're French, pardon me, God love you. I just care for you, but I can't help you uh, help what kind of DNA you have. I'm just speaking truth. Jacques Chirac, uh, he sees the issue uh, that is before us today, which is terrorism uh, that is loose on planet Earth as never before. Jesus said uh, uh, that violence uh, will fill the earth. Can you say amen? This prophecy is happening before. Jacques Chirac uh, said we will nuke any nation that harbors or sponsors any terrorist uh, that attacks France. Now, I want to tell you, uh, that's a profound statement coming from a Frenchman. <laughs> this is to convey to you the seriousness of what we're happening, of what we're dealing with, because you're well aware that uh, England was attacked with the subway bombers. Uh, you're well aware that Spain, uh, hundreds of people were maimed and killed uh, uh, in a bombing by terrorists, Muslim terrorists, mind you. And so when we begin to see these things, uh, we're seeing profound issues. Uh, and this is a conflict, not like any conflict uh, that we've ever been involved in. What we're dealing with, brace yourself, uh, the entire Muslim world uh, is against the West. You might as well face that. This is what we're dealing with. I don't care what you read about, what you, they view us as Christians, uh, and they view all the West as Christians. Whether they are living for God or not, this is what they view them at. And they are dead set uh, upon uh, overcoming and fulfilling uh, an agenda to restore the Muslim uh, empire that they once knew. Now note the timing of this as I draw this to conclusion. In Ezekiel 38 and uh, verse 8, uh, uh, the Bible says these words, After many days... You will be visited, notice it is in the latter years, you will come back into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel, which had long been desolate. They were brought out of the nations and now all of them dwell safely. That's in the latter years. This has been fulfilled right before our eyes. Verse 16 says, you will come up against my people Israel like a cloud to cover the land. It will be in the latter days that I will bring you against my land so that the nations may know me when I am hallowed in you, O Gog, before their eyes. I couldn't help as I uh, was uh, uh, pondering over this and, and reading this and thinking about the issues that are involved uh, about Haman, Haman in the land of Babylon. After the Babylonian captivity, when the Jews were there, he had a plot, and that plot was a wicked plot to, to kill every Jew that was in the land in 127 provinces. Uh, and uh, oh, I, I, I thought to myself uh, as I uh, thought about this uh, and pondered this, uh, uh, Mr. Ahmadinejad, you need to read the Bible because God cares about his people, God cares about his land, God cares about his city, uh, and he's not going to stand idly by. Now this is not the battle of Armageddon. This is the battle of Gog and Magog and the League of Nations, uh, and uh, what this is, uh, is judgment uh, upon Soviet Russia and the coalition of the Muslim nations. Now, God's going to solve the Muslim problem. You don't have to worry about it. God's very much at work. He's going to solve that problem right here. 
Listen to Ezekiel 38, verse 7. Prepare yourself and be ready, you and all your companies that are gathered about you, and be a guard or be an armorer for them. That's exactly what Soviet Russia is and has been for several decades, uh, is the main arms supplier for these Arab nations. Uh, now let's examine carefully who's going to come down. In a book called Armageddon by Grant Jeffrey, he uh, uh, notes these, and you can uh, pursue this for your own, so the nations of Ezekiel 38, the ancient nations Gog and Magog are the, main, uh, the modern city of Russia, uh, modern nation of Russia, Meshach and Tubal, Moscow and Tobolsk, Persia, Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, Ethiopia is Ethiopia and Sudan today, Libya is Libya today, Askenaz is the eastern part of Germany and part of Austria, Gomer is eastern Europe, uh, to, uh, to, to Garma, southeastern Europe, and many nations with you. And so here we have uh, this uh, Muslim coalition coming down uh, with Soviet Russia, who's the main leader of this, uh, this is not the battle of Armageddon. This is the battle uh, of Ezekiel 38 and 39, uh, and God has a specific purpose, and that purpose is to judge uh, Soviet Russia and uh, these uh, nations. Now note for a moment as I pass that there's only a diplomatic protest is gonna be given when this takes place. Ezekiel 38, verse 13, Sheba, Dedan, the merchants of Tarshish. Uh, uh, most commentators relate that to, uh, to Western Europe uh, and uh, England and uh, the nations uh, that have come out of England, which is Canada, uh, the United States, uh, and Australia. These are the young lions. So the young lions uh, are going to say, uh, have you come to take plunder? Have you gathered your army to take booty, to carry away silver and gold, to take away livestock and goods, uh, to take great plunder? So when this happens, there's only going to be a diplomatic protest, uh, but nothing is going to be done uh, about that. So this brings us then to a puzzle. If you'll read verse 39, you'll see that one-sixth of this army uh, is all that is able to return. Five-sixths is wiped out uh, by God, not by, uh, not by man, by God. And so how could this possibly come to pass? Uh, and as we begin to ponder this, there's two scenarios uh, that, are, uh, that are very possible. And one of these uh, would be... Uh, uh, something that was spoken by uh, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. He was in an interview with John Hagee, who's a, uh, a friend of Israel and does uh, various things. And so uh, John Hagee in one of his books says, I've asked Netanyahu where Iran was in the development of nuclear weapons. He candidly admitted that during his administration that Israeli intelligence had informed the United States intelligence community that Iran was working on uh, uh, medium and long range nuclear missiles that would be capable of hitting London, New York City, and Jerusalem. Netanyahu continued with a shocking revelation that the US intelligence uh, community was very skeptical, skeptical of the Israeli report. Later, Israeli intelligence provided phot photographic proof uh, that Russian scientists who made nuclear weapons for the USSR uh, during the Cold War and were now uh, unemployed were helping Iran achieve its dream of developing nuclear weapons. I responded in amazement. Can anyone possibly imagine the massive global economic and political chaos if three long-range uh, nuclear missiles simultaneously hit New York City and Wall Street, London, and Jerusalem in one hour, worldwide economic collapse uh, could be accomplished and Western civilization would be crushed. I have in hand news uh, magazine articles that I clipped out last week from World Magazine. Living on borrowed time, the threat of nuclear terrorism on American soil. Nuke nightmare, cover story, 60 years since Winston Churchill visited U.S. soil with a warning and four years since terrorists struck the homeland. The threat of nuclear attack just won't go away and news from Iran renews old fields. Ministries magazine, flaming world, uh, the end is the question uh, that is there. So two scenarios uh, are possible, maybe three. One would be that nuclear weapons uh, could be achieved uh, as the world stands by 
and this comes to pass, uh, which would instantly change the world in which you and I live. The second is the possibility that nuclear weapons could be detonated uh, in the United States uh, or England or both. Uh, and the third could be the bankruptcy of the United States of America. I was just reading recently, and the United States has spent a trillion dollars in Afghanistan and in Iraq. We're not sure of all this because we're looking at prophecy. But at any rate, what I want to bring home to you tonight uh, is that the times uh, of the Gentiles uh, are clearly coming to a close. See, there is a time clock in God's uh, working with this world. That time clock involves the church of Jesus Christ uh, because God's purpose is to take out of the nations uh, a people for his name. This is the commission of the church uh, and that's what we're about and displayed in this building tonight are the success uh, to some degree of the nations that have been touched by the gospel of Christ and God is gathering out. But you see, that has a time frame and will come to an end. It's called the fullness of the Gentiles uh, and politically and nationally, it's called the times of the Gentiles. What we're looking at is, as we see this, we're looking at something that the time clock is rapidly drawing to conclusion, and we're drawing to the end of what God is going to do, and the time of the church is nearing an end. When all this takes place, probably the rapture is going to already happen. If you're thinking about backsliding, this is a bad time to do it. <laughs> if you have loved ones that need to be saved, you better be witnessing it. Because when this happens, the purpose of the church is going to be finished. Because when that happens, God says, I will be sanctified in the eyes of the world. There's going to be a removal of every restriction that is upon the Jew today to build that temple that the Antichrist uh, will inhabit. Uh, and when that transpires, the times of the Gentiles are going to be passed uh, and a new chapter is opened, which is God's final dealing with the Jewish people. Looking tonight at the issues that are there, we need to remind ourselves uh, that we don't have forever to do what God has called us to do. You see, uh, we, we, we in the Western nations, we're comfortable, we're prosperous, we're, we're industrious, we uh, have a brain, we uh, honor human life, we honor uh, property and, and, uh, and commerce, uh, uh, but, and we just kind of have this mentality that it's, it's always going to be this way. You see, in one instant of time, that can change, and the clock can quit ticking, and it changes. In Revelation 10, I was just reading tonight, the angel of the Lord stands and begins to proclaim by him who created heavens and earth uh, that there will no longer be a delay. In other words, it's going to be finished. And the mystery of God will be finished. To you and I sitting in this building tonight, when you pick up an article and you see this article wiping Israel off the map. My friend, profound things are happening today. Profound issues are being generated. The clock's running out, and it's time that we did the work of God with all that was in us, with all of our heart and with all of our soul, we be about the business of the kingdom of God. If tonight you are a believer sitting in a church, may God's Holy Spirit put urgency upon you. You must do what you're going to do now. If you're a young worker thinking about uh, someday obeying God to go out, you need to do it now because the clock is ticking. We don't know when this is going to come to pass, but I want to tell you that when this is fulfilled, the rapture very likely will have already transpired and the opportunity will be gone. I want every head bowed. I want every eye closed. No one's moving around for the next several moments. Wiping Israel off the map is one of the most profound statements that I've ever read in my life.